Hey, remember that show Wheel of Time? You remember when that nameless guy made videos about the books and the TV show? Yeah, me too. It's about time his life settled down and he got back to things. All right. Yeah, it's been a bit, but there's some interesting things to talk about and some exciting stuff coming up that I want to share with you. So join me today as we dive into some big Wheel of Time news, and I'll fill you in on some things you may not know. Before we begin, smash the like button if you like Wheel of Time content, both for the books and the TV show. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff. As always, you can find the book spoiler button right here. But let's dive into the news. So it's official. Season three of The Wheel of Time has officially finished filming. That doesn't mean that there may not be some reshoots or some touch-up shots, but the principal photography has ended for the season. Season three, like season two, was filmed in a ton of different locations. Most of the filming was done in and around Prague, where Jordan Studios is located. And Jordan Studios is the massive studio based just outside Prague with multiple sound stages and outdoor sets. Also located in Prague is the Two Rivers sets. And I was actually able to tour those sets right after season three finished filming in Prague last year. You could check out all of the stuff that I got to do in Prague in the video linked up here somewhere. I'll have it linked in the description of the video as well. But season three also filmed at Berendov Studio, which is where many of the Kyrian scenes were in season two were filmed. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're filming Kyrian again. Those sets were taken down after season two, but it's likely that there are some indoor and outdoor sets built there for season three. Now, according to WattSeries.com, there was also filming at a castle in the Czech Republic that was likely used for a Camelin scene. Shori Agadashlu was seen filming there as well as Olivia Williams. Now, Shori is expected to be playing Elida in season three, and Olivia Williams is likely Queen Morghese. There was also extensive filming for season three in South Africa, where it's thought that they filmed both the scenes for the Ayo Waste and Tanchico. Either way, now that filming has wrapped, the long process of post-production begins, which I would expect is probably going to take more than a year. This is where the visual effects are added, where scenes are edited down, and potential reshoots are done for certain scenes. I think that the natural question that comes from the season three wrap date is, when will season three release? Now remember that season two did not release until well more than a year after the completion of filming. I don't see any reason for a change in that cadence, as much as that may disappoint some of you all. I would expect Wheel of Time season three to release sometime in 2025, likely in the late summer or autumn time frame that we've seen both season one and season two drop. But what will be covered in season three, you might ask? Well, we know the general idea. Season three of the show has been said to cover the material from book four of The Wheel of Time, The Shadow Rising, and from what has been publicly stated by the showrunners and even in private that I've heard, I do expect this season to feel much closer to the source material than the past two seasons. Both the ending of season one and the entirety of season two were changed fairly dramatically due to the departure of Barney Harris in season one. They essentially had to play around with some of the story to account for getting the characters where they needed to be. But all of the pieces are on the board now and in the right locations. And so we are set to have them film what is probably a closer adapted season. Keep in mind, it is still an adaptation. I would not take that as a promise uh, of word for word from the books, but I do think it will be much closer. That all being said, we have two separate audition scripts that have been leaked for season three of the show that will give us a glimpse into some of the possible plot lines for season three. Now, keep in mind as we review these that the audition scripts can be written simply for an audition and they could not even be remotely part of the script for the season. They could also be for cut scenes or pulled out of context content. So as we review these, don't assume that any of this is true for sure. In the past though, with the Wheel of Time, these audition scripts have been mostly accurate, but that does not guarantee that these are. So the first script that we are going to take a look at involves the Forsaken Samael, having a conversation with an unknown person on screen. Now this script comes to us courtesy of Wattseries.com, Always check out whatseries.com for the latest news. It's absolutely awesome. But let's go ahead and break it down. Where is it? Five seconds. You can't even wait five seconds for an answer. It's disappointing. I agree. I've read that you were one of the greatest generals of your age. I'm surprised I was able to capture you so easily. I wasn't the greatest general. I was a visionary, a pioneer, a conqueror. In my time, there were no armies. Hadn't been for centuries. Knives were used for cooking, not killing. 
And as for military tactics, they'd all been long forgotten. I discovered the art of war. Me. I taught people to be soldiers. I taught those soldiers to form armies. And I taught those armies to follow me. Well, they're not here now, are they? It's just you and me. I'm not afraid of you, Samael. And you'll answer my question eventually. Where is it? It's all right. I can wait. That's the thing, though, isn't it? You can't. Your weaves hold me here. You can't move from that spot. You can't eat or sleep or shit. You can't do any of those things you mortals have to do to stay alive. I'm not your prisoner. You're mine. And if there's one thing I've gotten rather good at these past 3,000 years, it's waiting. Ha 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 ha. Okay, that wasn't hopefully the laugh. But that is certainly not a scene from The Shadow Rising, and Samael is never captured like this in the books. It does appear that they have pared down the number of Forsaken, so it's possible that there are some plot changes needed to get where they want. What's also unclear here is who captured Samael. It appears to be a channeler of some sort, but whether that person is male or female is unknown. And if I had a guess, I'd say that this is Rand that has captured him. Samael doesn't appear to be speaking to him like he's a bug like a Forsaken would to anyone else. But that's truly just a guess on my part. Could Samael be taking Asmodian's role in this, and this is Rand capturing him? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But let's take a look at another audition script, and this time for the role of Elida. This audition script is two different sections. So let's take a look at the first one, starting with Elida. I would like to request an audience with the Amelin Seed. You've been gone for some time, Elida. Allow me to explain how things work here now. Only sitters may call a meeting with her. It seems I have returned at a bad time for the Amerlin, no? She seems to be dealing with quite the mess at the moment. A clever woman would see my value to help tidy things up. Perhaps that's too much to expect. You forget yourself, Elida. On the contrary, I know myself and my duty very well. I have come here in good will on behalf of the Queen of Andor to inquire about the well-being of her daughter. A letter would have sufficed, perhaps, but the Queen hasn't received any correspondence from the White Tower in months. I can only assume that the Amerlin's letters are getting lost. Tell her that the Queen would dearly love to know how her daughter is getting on, assuming the Tower even knows where the girl is. Tell Swan I shall be in my chamber. Now this sequence fits very well uh, within what we know of the Shadow Rising. Elida has been sent back to the Tower to find out what's going on with Elaine and making her displeasure known to Liana. Now, we're going to discuss the scene some more in a moment with some other information that we have about season three, so we will come back to this. But let's look at the other scene. If spying on me is your intent, I suggest you practice more. You're the seer, yes? Min? All the talent you possess and Swan uses you like a dog sniffing after a rabbit. It can be lonely knowing what's to come, seeing the future writ largely in front of your eyes. I too shoulder that burden but I suspect my visions and my prophecies are far less frequent than yours. How do you bear it, child? Not well. I usually look away. Oh no. Painful as it must be, you must never avert your eyes. Visions in full are uncertain enough, but they are tools that we can use to bring about change. That is why it is called a gift. I had a vision once that the royal line of Andor would be the key to in the last battle, and so I traveled there and helped put the prophecy in action for the pattern. I'm not a big fan of that level of responsibility. With great responsibility comes great power. Those who cannot see need us to see for them. And may I give you one last piece of advice, seer to seer. Never let anyone abuse your gift. So this is Elida and Min having a conversation. And this is a slight deviation from the books in that Elida isn't aware of Min's gifts at the time they speak. But both of these scenes imply Elida's return to the tower and that Min is there and helping Swan. Now, this would appear to be a scene that happens before Swan is overthrown. And I think this scene could be easily read as after that as well. And remember that these audition scripts are often slightly changed, so take that for what you will. Let's get to something exciting. A couple weeks back, an article dropped on Deadline about Wheel of Time. Lynette Rice, the author of the article, sat down with Rafe Judkins, the showrunner for the Wheel of Time, Rosamund Pike, who plays Moraine, Daniel Henney, who plays Lan, Sharon Gillum, the incredibly talented costume designer for the show who I got to meet. She's in that video that I linked earlier. Davina Lamont, who is a head makeup designer and hair designer for the show. While there were a number of things they discussed in that interview, the biggest takeaway was Rafe discussing the first 15 minutes of season three. Let me show you what Rafe said. The first 15 minutes of season three is one of the most bonkers set pieces I've ever seen on television. I was just watching it this week and it is absolutely bananas what our team pulled off. Just a bunch of women in their 40s and 50s shredding each other and it's wonderful to behold. So I will say I have heard similar excitement about the opening to season three before this, 
from people related to the show, not publicly. So this has me even more excited about hearing it from Rafe now publicly discussing it. They don't usually put themselves out there like this unless they know they have the goods. So what is Rafe referring to? I think the context of 40 to 50 year old women shredding each other it has me pretty sure what's going to be going on. I think Swan is getting deposed to start the season, and I think the Black Aja plays a large role in instigating this. I think we're going to see the Tower Schism happen right in front of us, and we will see Aes Sedai fighting Aes Sedai in the halls of the tower. But there are a few problems with my assumption here. For one, the audition scripts that we just covered. It would seem very fast to introduce Elida as a character, set up a conversation with her and Lyanna, then another one with Min, and then have her lead a battle to oppose the Amarlin in 15 minutes, right? I think that's probably the biggest issue, but it really doesn't change my assumption. For one, if it's paced properly, I think it's possible for all of those things to happen. Those are not long scenes, and it would be enough to set up Elida as a character. And also remember that audition scripts do not always make it into the final product. I do think that starting the season with an action set piece and with some dramatic action and magic use will really set the tone for the season and hopefully hook viewers. Season two was a much slower opening, and while it was really, really good, I think episode one of season two was probably the weakest episode of the season simply due to the lack of action. Do you think that the bonkers 15 minutes is going to be Swan being deposed? Or do you think it'll be something else? Let me know in the comments of the video. So the countdown until season three's release is underway. But what about season four of the show? Has it been greenlit? Will it ever get made? Why haven't they announced it yet, if not? Well, let's start with this. Season four has not yet been announced, but that does not mean that we will not get it. We did not find out about season three being greenlit until a couple months after season two was done with filming, and it was almost a year after season one had finished airing. Considering that season three just finished filming, it's possible that we won't hear for a few more months. I would imagine much of the decision will be based on how the season three footage appears to executives. If it's as good as many of the cast and crew are saying, then I think the odds are good. I can also say through another source that the vibe around whether or not it'll get picked up is trending very positive, that it is thought at Amazon to be a big property for them. I will also add that if for some reason Amazon were to cancel the show, I would imagine that it will get picked up by another service. It would not be getting canceled by Amazon because it wasn't popular. It would only be getting canceled by Amazon due to the high budget and their own internal monetization and some of the other shows they're looking at investing in. That being said, I have a good feeling that we're going to hear in the nearest future about season four being picked up, and I think it'll be good news. We'll discuss what could be in season four in a future video. All right, so a few weeks back, I got the chance to be at JordanCon in Atlanta which is always a ton of fun. I got to see many of you. Thank you to everybody that said hello and hung out for a bit. I did not get a ton of chances to record really any content at the convention, but I had a great time at the Igloo Bon Balefire panel, obviously at the Looney Theory panel, which by the way, my theory won again, two years in a row. Not bragging, but, but I did. And then I had the chance to host the Wheel of Time Family Feud panel and we had a very close match between Team Kevin and Team Jess. It was a ton of fun as always. But if you've never been to a Wheel of Time convention or a convention in general, I highly recommend checking them out. It's an amazing time, and if you're anything like me, it's hard to find other Wheel of Time nerds in real life to talk about the books and the show with. Plus, you get to meet some great guests. One of my highlights at Jordan Con this year was having drinks with Guy Roberts, who plays Uno on the show. One day I'll have to tell you the story about the shots that weren't shots. We'll talk about that sometime. But that's a great segue, though, into WatCon. If you missed Jordan Con this year and want to be a part of a Wheel of Time convention, there is another one coming up that I help plan and I help put it on. WatCon is taking place July 12th through the 14th here in Columbus, Ohio. We have an incredible set of special guests set to be in attendance, plus a ton of other amazing content, which I can't wait to share with you in future videos. Maria Simmons, Robert Jordan's researcher and assistant, will be in attendance. She's an absolute gem. You will love talking to her. Kate Redding and Michael Kramer, the famous audiobook readers for the Wheel of Time series, will be there. They have done live readings the last few years at WatCon. Night of Dreams. Yes! Chapter 20, The Golden Crane. <laughs> Michael Livingston, author of Origins of the Wheel of Time, will be in attendance. You'll get to pick his brain and learn about why he has come to be known in the community as Hot Mike. Lastly, our guest of honor this year, we have Guy Roberts, Uno from the show, 
who will be there with us. And if you didn't already know this, Guy is a massive Wheel of Time book fan, dating back to when the series released. This was long before he was cast as Uno on the show, and so he has not only opinions and thoughts on the TV show, but also on the series. You're going to get to hear some behind-the-scenes information about filming and stories, which are a lot of fun. Plus, he's genuinely amazing human being and a ton of fun uh, for you all to get to hang out with. You can find out more about that at watcon.com. One last thing of note, the room block is filling up fast. So make sure to book your room as fast as possible, which you can just do by entering a card, I think. You don't have to pay up front. Also, grab your ticket to the convention as soon as possible. It is possible that we will sell out this year, so do not wait. I can't wait to see all of you at WatCon with our MC Matt Hatch, the innkeeper who will be back from his YouTube hiatus. So that's it for the news. Are you getting more excited for season three of The Wheel of Time? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when more Wheel of Time content drops. I have a book video coming out here very soon about some big moments from the series that you will not want to miss. Huge thank you to my patrons for supporting me here on the channel. If you'd like to support the Wheel of Time content, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, you will probably like one of these right here as well. Take care and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.